Well, today on Nation a Window Cleaning Podcast, we are going to be talking all about marketing when you're new. You know I hate door knocking, so let's find out what can we do instead of door knocking. And I got a pretty awesome guest today, so make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully this is better than a cat video. And more importantly, hopefully you get something out of it. Uh, this has been going on for six plus years every single week. So go back, watch, binge, do all of that. Uh, if it's not your first time here and you are like an OG and you are officially one of the people who uh, are a podcast listener, it is because of you that I do this. So thank you so much. Uh, also, shameless plug, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. So if you need supplies, that's what I do. I want to be a rep. Uh, you will be a cool kid if I can put your order in for you. So my number directs 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Save it. I'm probably the only jersey you know, so make sure to put that in there. And of course, as always, if you want any of the awesome stickers or any of the awesome articles, you just want to nerd out more on the industry, go to AWC mag.com that's the american window cleaner magazine and get a subscription you know i own the magazine so i see every one of you that gets a subscription so go buy it it's a real paper magazine by the way shows up to your door so either way let's jump into today's episode and like i said you guys know that i really really dislike door knocking so i thought we would talk marketing and who better to have than matt from i mean before anything you are kind of the marketing guy. So if, if anybody's been living under a rock, tell us kind of who you are, what do you do, where are you from? Give us the rundown. Quite the intro, man. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so I'm from Michigan. Um, I'm just a normal dude. I uh, I got into this thing called business like 10-ish years ago, back in 2012. Um, I had zero dollars to my name almost, and I picked up this thing called a window cleaning squeegee, and um, I said, all right, I'll give it a go. So that's kind of where I started. I started a company. Gosh, this is back when uh, when we had forums, right? It wasn't Facebook yeah, yeah. groups. It was forums. Yeah. And I started this company called The Dirt Hunter. And I remember everybody on the forum, dude, was like, like razzing me to death about the name. You'll never make it with that name and blah, blah, blah. And so I always remember that. It was kind of a... Uh, it was kind of a motivator, honestly. But I built I built that window cleaning business, um, and I still own it today with a, a partner. Um, and I always say that that business is what allowed me to grow all my other companies because I learned everything that I needed to learn in that company, and I was able to implement it in my my businesses going forward. So, um, you know, just just over the years going to conventions, and I have a podcast, the Service Industry Podcast. People start asking like marketing questions and. I found myself on the phone for hours every week, helping people for free. Um, and eventually I just said, hey, this is taking so much time, like I've got to charge for it. And so that's kind of where our marketing business, serviceindustrycoach.com got started. Um, and that's honestly like, I don't even care about the money. It's just like, I love helping people grow their home service businesses, especially new guys who are who are trying to change their family tree um, and all of that. And then, and then since then in 2019, my partner and I started an e-commerce brand called Brave American. And we took everything we had learned from the service industry. We implemented it in this e-commerce store. We, we sold these wooden American flags and we went from zero to 5 million in our first year. Nice. And so I always talk about, you know, like, I think a lot of people think like home service businesses in general are kind of stepping stone companies, but, um, dude, I'm telling you, man, from being in this for so long, like there's a lot of people that have legit lived their dreams out because they've built their companies in a significant oh, yeah. way. Oh yeah. There's like when you when you start a company in general, uh, services I love too because like in an e-commerce business you still have to buy the thing that you're selling. So you yeah. Know, but in services we sell our our knowledge, we sell our, like our time. So if you can learn a lesson doing any of that, you know that's business. Business is business no matter what it is that we do or sell. So yep. Yeah. Yeah, it all yeah. translates over for sure. So so that's kind of my story. Um, today I, I spend a lot of my time just helping people like you. You know. Um, people want to grow, people want to scale their business and change their family tree. And that's what I'm passionate about. Nice. Do you still remember, by the way, like in the very beginning, when you joined those forums, do you still remember like specific people that helped you? Like, do you still remember their name, like burned into your, your, your brain? Yeah. So I was actually extremely lucky. Um, I was in the same market as this guy called Josh Latimer. Yeah. 
Um, we lived literally three minutes from each other. And when I first started my window cleaning business, I get a phone call. I remember exactly where I was at driving down the highway. And he's like, Hey, I know you have no clue who I am, but I own this company called birds beware. And, um, you want to get lunch? I'm like, Oh, this is strange, right? Like a local <laughs> competitor, but what I knew, of his, I knew of his company cause I've seen their trucks and me and Josh to this day are like amazing friends. Nice. And I mean, the guy helped me so much. He let me come sit in his office and listen to his staff answer phones. And, and he taught me a lot of what I know today. Um, so I know he was all over the forums back then as well. So I, I would say that was probably the one guy that, that really made the biggest impact. Yeah. That's what you get to be now. Like when, when people see people putting content out, but genuinely just putting content out, yeah. liking to help people, they just don't get it until that comes up. And you're like, I still remember the people in the very beginning that like, did the first nice thing for me where I was like, whoa, this, this is awesome. like, I looked up to them so much to be able to like help me build something for my family, for my employees, families, for all of that. Yep. And that's, you get to be that now, you know, in helping people. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah, man. It's a good feeling for sure. So yeah. uh, just yeah. give them back. Yeah, exactly. So I, I know marketing is, is your thing. You, you, you know, you've done it on different platforms. You've done it in different industries. You've done it everything. I am a, very big um, naysayer of door knocking. It's this new trend. It's this like everybody on TikTok sees it. The content that's being put out is great. I mean, there are millions of views on each of these kind of TikToks, yeah. not millions of window cleaners, of course, but people just like the awkwardness of door knocking. And yeah. then there's, of course, the loudest people are always the haters that go, oh, you're pushing them in. And then there's, you know, it's a great format for um, uh, content. But Building a business, I'm personally not a fan of it. And I get that every time I say, hey, this sucks, don't do it. People go, well, then what should I do? Okay. Right. So we're going to talk a little bit about marketing in the beginning. Like how can somebody go from no customers to 100 customers? The marketing thing is so overwhelming. It's always kind of a slow push. But what did you do in that beginning? Or what would you suggest for somebody to do to go from like a zero to a hundred customers? Like what do yeah. they focus on in the very, very beginning when they got, they're building out of nothing? Yeah, well, first off, I'm not a door knocker either. Um, I can't say it doesn't work because I have a buddy that owns a pest control business. They do 30 million a year and that's all they do. Yeah. But dude, it is a grueling, grueling way to acquire customers. So I'm with you there. Yeah. Um, I think there's too many other ways. So I'm just gonna talk about what we did in our, our first couple of years and what we help people do. Um, so this is not theory, this works. Uh, and when you're first starting out your business, you might not have a lot of money, but you probably have a lot of time. Yeah. And so that means if we don't have a lot of money, we're probably gonna have a lot of boots on the ground type of stuff. And so the very first thing that we did when we first got started uh, was we printed out these four by six or, or five by seven postcards. Um, and what we would do is we would create offers on the back. We wouldn't discount our services, but we would make it look like they were discounted. So um, you know, the copy would have some kind of urgency, uh, you know, expiration dates, those kind of things. Yeah. And typically, you know, we do window cleaning, but also pressure washing, roof cleaning, stuff like that. So we would advertise two or three different offers on the back and we would go and put these in the newspaper boxes on people's mailbox. So here in Michigan, almost every mailbox has a newspaper box attached. I know that's not the case for everybody. Um, if neighborhoods that we really like didn't have those, we would do door hangers. Yeah. Um, and do we, we would be doing, you know, we try to do 5,000 of these things a month to the same neighborhoods every 30 days over and over and over. And we've never stopped doing that to this day to those same neighborhoods, but we've transitioned from putting them out by hand to every door direct mail. Yeah. yeah. And, and dude, clockwork. I mean, it is the number one way to go get your first 300 customers in your first season fast. Yeah. And I always get people that say it too, they go, well, if you're already there dropping stuff off, why not door knock? And you brought up the, the pest control company. That's great. If you're just doing a one and done like solar roofing, yeah. that's where all those guys really come from industry wise, especially yeah. pest control, same thing. They're, once they get somebody in, they have them, right? There's a contract. They're just, they're done. They're on to the next guy, get the next guy, get the next guy. In what we do in services, we want to have repeat people, but we want to create an experience for our Thing that we do, but make people want to come back and want to reschedule. And that's the difference between door knocking and what you're saying is putting something in there where people go, well, you're already dropping it off their house. Yes. 
but I'm not making them feel uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm putting it in front of them. They're going to look at it the first time, throw it away. They're going to look at it the second time and go, man, this looks so familiar. I can't, they're not going to understand. That's that whole repeat thing. Yep. Same thing done with EDDM. Yep. You're just getting in front of people, but the big thing of what you're doing, you're building a stronger customer base, but it's taking a little bit longer than like, if I go up to somebody's house and go, hey, I'm a window cleaner. I'd like to clean your windows. They go, no thanks. They go, oh, I'll do it for cheaper. No thanks. I'll do it for cheaper. No thanks. I'll do it for cheaper. Okay, fine. Yeah. I got a customer. I go, yes, I got a customer. It was so much faster than doing what you said. Yep. But it's the kind of clientele you're getting. And like you said too, when you build a, a offer, People go, well, if there's no discount, it's not an offer. It is because there's buying triggers. The psychological mm -hmm. side of purchasing makes people decide that they think it's a great idea. You can't be wrong when you make the decision. Right. And that's where that happens. That's why you're getting such a better clientele that way. Yeah, no, for sure. The biggest mistake we see people make is, you know, they're like, oh, postcards don't work or direct mail doesn't work. It's like, well, let me see your postcard first off. <laughs> you know, the offers are terrible. It's like 10% off or whatever the case is. There's no urgency. But more importantly is they don't do it long enough. It's yeah. like, well, how many did you mail out? Well, we mailed out a thousand. It's like, well, that's not even like a, a test size. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so you should be mailing out a thousand every single month for the first six months and change up your, your postcards every month. And then you can tell me it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think consistency, even when you don't see the immediate result is... I mean, here's the deal. All marketing works to some degree. Um, it's just how consistent are you right. and, and, and how willing are you to A-B test your postcards or whatever the case you're doing to make them better until you figure out what does work. Yeah, A, B, C, D test. Like yeah. people, I, I've had a couple, I mean, I talk to hundreds of window cleaners a week and there's great stories and bad stories. And I, I remember some of these like awful stories. And this one happened, man, five six, seven years ago, but this guy called me, it was January and he goes, dude, like I'm hurting, man. I didn't save the money I needed to. Like it was new in business. I just got a blah, blah, blah. So I did it, man. I did it. I said, well, what'd you do? He goes, I went out and I bought 25 EDDM pieces and I mailed them all out. I spent my last X amount of dollars. I had everything. I mean, I got enough for gas and two meals. Like I'm, I'm done tapped yeah. out. And I said, you sent them all out. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to get a return. That's not how EDDM works. He's yeah. well, I just 2,500 people see it. I think you're wrong. Fortunately, unfortunately, I've never heard from the guy again. So mm. it, it kind of ended that way. But people also look at it. And this is a couple of weeks ago. I had a guy say that, uh, oh, in my area, advertising doesn't work. But the hard truth is, is advertising always works. Your ad just sucks. Yeah. And People sometimes, I mean, your logo, I still remember it from the forum days and Dirt Busters, yeah. like the logo. And that's, again, where you got kind of compared a lot with Latimer because Latimer's logo was so good. Yeah. Like Latimer was one of the first guys I remember having like, I call it like a Web 2.0, but now everybody's got like kind of a cartoon character almost yeah. like mascot on there. And that connects with people on a whole nother level than if I have a clip art picture of a squeegee yeah. and it says window clean you know like those days where that was still like innovative is like you instantly had better marketing than everybody else around you because some guy had uh you know a eight bit clip art guy of squeegeeing and it's like well how does that connect you yeah know, you didn't, a percentage doesn't count like dollars do so why yep. are you presenting something you know you your ad doesn't work and they go well I think it works. And the sad thing is, is they built the ad. So of course they look course. at like designers, like I'm so proud of this thing I built. And it's like, man, you, you really do have to split test everything down to the color and the, the pictures and the connection. It's, it's all has to be tested. It is man. And you have to become obsessed with it. And you know, I know you sell equipment, so that's your bread and butter, but I see so many guys get hung up on, like, they're so focused on just equipment. Like yeah. it's, it's the only thing, like they're obsessed with the equipment, but I and trust me, that stuff is important. Like you got to have the right tools for your team to be able to provide the jobs and do a good job. I understand that. But if you don't have the jobs, the equipment's irrelevant. Yeah. And so like people don't become obsessed with the things that generate new customers in their business. And um, to be honest, I, I think oftentimes it's because they don't know where to start. They don't know what to do. It's overwhelming. And then they just move on to the next thing. Um, yeah. but, but we all started there. And so, you know, that's where it kind of comes into like why I love, gosh, there's so much information nowadays, you know, go listen to, to whatever podcast you want and you can learn everything you want for essentially free. Yeah. Um, but, but you have to go find it. You have to go listen yeah. to it. You have to. Yeah. There's nothing worse, I think, than 
the new business owner who goes into any group or Facebook group or forums or Instagram or comments on a post or your podcast and goes, Hey, I'm starting a business. What would you recommend? Yeah. It's like, well, dude, it's not a question. Like if you have a question, I'll answer it, but I'm not going to tell you everything because that means you've done no research and you just yeah. want me to somehow feed you a working business. That's not how it works. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, man. Yeah. That's and the first two years of business is always different than, than, you know, the, the latter, right? A, a company like yours has been around for a while. At this point, you're feeding the beast, mm-hmm. right? The fire's already burning. All you're doing is you could throw wet wood on a fire if it's hot enough, right? Yep. In the very beginning, it's like your car broke down on the side of the road. You're trying to push it. The hardest part is before there's any momentum and you're just trying to get the thing moving. Yeah. So that first two years is really, really the hard part. Like you said, people give up, but what, what difference do you see happening from day one to, you know, the second year, like how does that transition go? And how do you know that you're actually moving the ball in the right direction? Yeah. I mean, that's why they call it the first year blues. Like you can be doing all the right things, working 60 hours a week and you don't feel like you're moving as fast as you should be, but it's because it takes time. And this is the other thing I was touching this real quick is like when people market, they get really busy. They stop marketing because they're really busy. What they don't realize, like in their head, they're like, well, I'll just start marketing again when we slow down. It's like, you're really busy right now because you built the momentum. Yeah. And now when you kill that, the momentum's gone. It's going to take longer to build that momentum again. It's no different. uh, You know, in year two, you're going to have a little more momentum than year one. And what you realize is over the years, you start to, if you do it right, you you start to build a customer list that, you know, 300, 500, 2000 customers. And now you've got this, this gold mine. And you can extract money out of this customer list literally whenever you want. Yeah. And, you know, so when you have your slow months in August and September, then those are the times we're hammering our customer list because, you know, we know our marketing doesn't perform quite as good during those months as maybe it does in May. Um, and so you start to learn all these little tricks that allows you to build momentum year round in your business. But the three pillars do that people only need to focus on new sales. So acquiring new customers giving that customer amazing customer experience so they want to come back and then a system to get them to repeat with you on a regular basis. Those are the only three things people need to worry about. Yeah. And in the beginning, people are more worried about the, well, I don't know, you know, I'm thinking about starting, you know, in May of next year. Yeah. I I got to get it. I got to get my website done. I got to, you know, it's like all you need is a scrubber, a squeegee, a towel, a bucket, now you're a window cleaner. Yeah. People go, yeah, but they're a buck. Of, of course, they're a buck of Bob. We all were. Yeah. Unless you had an investment in the beginning to buy the newest trucks and the best website and the S, like no one starts that way. So yeah. what you do is you start because getting one job is that start of momentum. And now it's just customers. Yep. You get one job, they pay you $200. You got $200 more new equipment. Yep. Right. Now you got a week's worth of customers. You got $1,000. Maybe you do get some new equipment, but maybe now you get some SEO. Yep. Right. Maybe you get your website built or you put that down payment on the, you know, the build or you get your postcards or flyers or you get that first thousand because you can't afford the 10,000 at the price break. Like that's momentum. Yeah. And unfortunately, the door knocking versus it's like, well, I could have a customer today. It's like, well, now you have a job like mm. you have one day's worth of work. And these guys that are, are claiming how they have, you know, 40 percent repeat like that's really low. You, you have to be like, once you're in this, if you do it right, drop into dentist clothes and everything else, you could have 90 plus percent of people doing it every six months. I mean, yep. That means that the thing that they got was happiness out of it and not feeling like they got pressured. No, for sure. Um, and the other thing with door knocking is just, it takes so long, man. Yeah. Like I can put out a hundred door hangers in the time that I could probably knock, I don't know, 20 doors. Right. And so I can get, you know, three, four, five X the output um, and it's just a numbers game. Like we yeah. know what our return is on those things. So, you know, we get a roughly a, a half a percent return, let's say, um, then I just reverse engineer the numbers. How many customers do I need? This is how many postcards we need to get out. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that other side of that too, is, is that those customers that you have, like eventually EDDM, right? You said the whole time yeah. you either have time, you have money. That's absolutely it. When you get to that point where you have 5,000, people go, well, yeah, but it takes you a long time to put those out. It does, yeah. but I'm touching 5,000 people. And when you start doing that more and more and more, they're keeping that. And every one of those people have a great experience. Yep. You're not you know, throwing gravel on their driveway. That's another thing I'm. people always razz me about that I'm not a fan of. But when you do those and all of a sudden you're like, well, I'm so busy, I can't do 5,000. Awesome. Because yeah. now you're going to spend, what, 
30 cents, you know, with printing to go send an EDDM. Now you're going to do this exact same thing, but now I got to click one button. I got to click print on five different header sheets and get a couple boxes, count stuff up and it's done. Like I yep. could do 5,000 pieces. I could do that in, in 15 minutes, you know, yep. where as you get bigger, you get more and more. And like you said, the momentum is what happens, but you have to have a, a, a marketing piece or a, uh, even a campaign, even an idea, even a concept that is tested a thousand ways. And uh, I'm just going on a limb here, but the first yeah. time you did postcards, I'm guessing you now have a better return than you ever did then because yeah. you split test. You go, well, okay, I did a yellow one. It didn't really do real well. I did an orange one. It did better. So I kept orange, but I went yellow text and uh, that didn't really work. So I'm blue text. That kind of didn't work, but I went green text. That did really well. So I have yeah. green and eventually once you build this thing i mean uh, that's why people don't do it it's because it takes a while but eventually like you said you just build a thing it becomes an atm and you know exactly what's going to come back from it yeah yeah exactly i mean we have like seven or eight templates that we use now and like that's it those are the same every single year um we know what offers work what offers don't work which ones perform the best so i mean dude we're 10 years into this thing right yeah um and and I talk about this stuff on my podcast a lot. And so and it's totally free. And that's why I always encourage people like you want to save 10 years of, of headache and, and money wasted. Like go listen to these people that have already done what you're trying to do. That is the best piece of advice I ever got when I first started. It was like um, a guy told me is like, go find somebody it doesn't have to be in the window cleaning space, but go find somebody kind of in that home service business niche. That's absolutely killing it that you would trade places with and go learn from them. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what I did uh, with multiple people, Josh being one of them. Um, another guy who, who ran a ginormous pest control business was another one. And dude, I'm telling you, that was like a complete game changer because they helped me implement things in my business that were already working. Like yeah. I didn't have to recreate the wheel. Um, or find so think, out the hard way. <laughs> find out the hard way. Yeah. And I mean, there's plenty of things I had to learn on my own, but uh, there was plenty of things that I didn't. Yeah. And so that was super valuable for me. Yeah. Su super off topic but it will make sense but like nasa has been around forever and they've done everything and people have died and yeah. millions and billions have been spent and then spacex comes in yeah. and where they are in a couple of years is where nasa took them 60 years and it's because they look all of those lessons and went Ooh, don't do that yep. you know when they do this that happens and they learn from their other mistakes and they can be so much more faster and so much more accelerated of course. Yeah. I see people. I mean, even today, dude, I see people in the Facebook group and like everybody, everybody has this thing where like they have to be right. They re reinvent the wheel too. It's it, like, it, I know that worked for you, but I'm going to do this. It's like, it, oh. I'm like, gosh, dude, if you guys would just switch your mindset up of like always be learning rather yeah. than always be right, uh, you would be so much further ahead. I'm telling you, man, the bane of my existence now are the, uh, the young, the 14 year olds who, I, this is a real story. I'm not bashing on that. Yeah. We have a ton of these young guys, which is awesome. But uh, I had a guy, he's 14 years old. He is cleaning windows for seven weeks, seven weeks. Yeah. It was a summer break. And he was telling me how I didn't know what I was talking about or whatever. And I said, you know, and he was just being really rude to me kind of in a private thing. And I said, let me guess, you're kind of, you're young, right? He goes, I'm old enough to know. He's like, I've been doing this now seven weeks. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool that you've been doing this seven weeks, but yeah. I mean, I got loaves of bread that almost make it that long. So right, right, right. that's the thing. It's like, if you just listen and just for a second, assume you don't know everything, yeah. it's all out there. It's all being said by people who really, you could get something from, yeah. but yet they're more worried about being either right or somehow saying that they made this thing yeah. than they are of just going, Hey, maybe what if I change this? This guy said this, or, you know, that lesson was already like, open it up and listen. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's funny because you, uh, there's a very small percentage of people that get that. Um, yeah. like the first person that pops in my head is Ryan Johnson. I, I met Ryan when he was first getting started. He's like, I feel like he's like a little brother to me. Um, uh, <laughs> we've, we've never even met in person, but we're friends on Facebook and I followed his journey the whole time. And, and now he's crushing, like his home yeah. service business is absolutely killing it. They've got an amazing brand. I'm super proud of him, but he was willing to do what was required even when he didn't feel like doing it. He had a learning mindset rather than I know everything. Yeah. And, and wouldn't you know it, like he's further ahead than probably 95% of window cleaners. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to put you on the spot here too. So we've talked about kind of what you did. Flyers cost money, door yeah. hangers, EDDM, that stuff costs money. But if I'm new and I'm listening and I'm like, yeah. yeah, that's all great. But door knocking costs me $0. 
what do you recommend for free or pretty darn close to free mm -hmm. to get some kind of momentum? Now, with that all being said, free is always not going to necessarily give you as much momentum as saying something that's been tested and, and spent on and things like that. But what do you recommend that you would tell people to go out there? And if they got zero assets, how can they get the ball rolling? Uh, you're not going to like my answer probably, but this is something we still do today is um, our biggest clients are property managers in assisted living homes. Yeah. And those are 100% free to get in front of. Yeah. So we will cold call them. We will stop in their offices. We will drop off dozens of donuts. We will drop off business cards and like all assisted living homes, at least here in Michigan by law have to get their windows cleaned, I think twice a year. Yeah. Um, and so they need what I have. And so I'm, I'm in front of all those people. I mean, we've landed the Detroit airport. Uh, we have those people on repeat and that was off cold calling. Um, yeah. Detroit Arsenal off cold calling, which is free. It's not yeah. sexy. It's not fun. But when it comes to property managers, the mindset people have to get in is like, these people are dying for good contractors. Yeah. And so I know that our company stands for, you know, everything we do is quality. We're going to fix things that are broken. We're going to do, we're going to come back if we screw something up. That's all those people want. Yeah. And so when, when they meet somebody like you, whether it's a cold call or a walk-in or whatever the case is, like they'll be all over it. And so those, those are actually really easy relationships to develop and it's hundred percent free. Yeah. And that's different than residential. Residential, it's all about the experience because it's a, it's a want, not a need. But when you get into property managers, they need window cleaning. Like they need somebody to change their light bulbs and to check their plumbing and to certify their fire. Like they have so many hats. Like you said, they just want somebody to be like, you'll take it off my plate. You'll do an amazing job. I won't even have to worry about it. Cool. You're my guy forever. Yep. And they got multiple buildings and they have other contacts in property management. Maybe they're a property management company, which yep. every time I would go and, um, uh, one of our property managers, she always would write a check. They never paid card, but she goes up oh, first of the month. Come pick up your check. Yeah, I would love that. I personally would go do that because I'd walk into the facility and there was fifty property managers, yeah. and some of them were sitting around her desk, and you'd be talking. You know, you'd be you'd be kind of you know waving or you know poking or like you said, bringing snacks and yep. and all of a sudden that those contacts that was free. That yep. was free because nobody else was doing it. Yeah, yeah. If you make their dude, here's the deal: being a property manager, like in my opinion almost not a worse job on the planet. Like the only thing they do all day is put out fires with crazy homeowners. Yeah. So if you can make their life easier, like they will go, they will try to get you on every single job they have, even if your bid's a little bit higher. Yeah. Um, and we see that all the time. Like, you know, a lot of people get three bids, but they'll fight for us because they say, hey, we work with this company on a regular basis. If anything's wrong, they always come back and fix it. They're always on time, et cetera. Yeah. I've never worked with these other two guys. I don't know who they are. Yeah, they're 10% less. So you build these relationships and it's completely free. Yeah. And I, I love too, and property managers, they love you. They'll call you and be like, hey, uh, I have like some spider web issues in one of our drive ups. Could you do that for the building too? And you're like, yeah. well, not normally, but for you. I mean, we started a janitorial division years and years ago because one of our main property managers called and was like, dude, I got nobody for these buildings. Like, here's what I can pay you. Yep. Um, is there any chance you could do that? I said, it's just not in our wheelhouse. He goes, I got two more weeks of this company before they're, you know, done, done. He's like, I don't know anybody else that does stuff like you figure it out. Let me know in a week if it can happen. And that was the thing. I was like, okay, let's go. Let's figure yeah. this out. Can we build it? And all of a sudden it started a whole nother industry because that guy just was like, dude, I got three buildings. I want to send you three buildings right now. This is what I'm paying you. Can you make it work? Yeah. And yeah. That was all, again, a relationship. It was, a, it was a, it was a simple call, but it takes time. It does. And new people in industry things sometimes they're not patient and that i feel like is the biggest killer for businesses yeah dude and, and at the end of the day like if you need money quick the residential route is the route to go um and i don't care dude print flyers on paper you know what i mean like like it's not free but it's close close um and just get out there and start putting those things out over and over like you're gonna make some money and it's yeah. not you know you might not get a crazy return but you're gonna make some money and the important thing is is when you start making money is that you pay yourself as little as humanly possible where you can still pay your bills and that's literally it and you reinvest everything back into the business for as long as possible yeah um and because what i see people do all the time is you know they i don't know let's say they do 100k a year and they're paying themselves 
$50,000 or $60,000 a year salary, and they have no money left over to, to actually grow the business. And they wonder why they're stuck at hundred K for the last five years. Yeah. It's like, well, dude, it takes sacrifice. Like, I wish I could be the guy on here. That's like, has a magic button for you. But the reality is, is like, you have to sacrifice for like the next three years. If you want to grow a big business, it's, the, yeah. it's just how it is. Yeah. It's the whole business owners eat ramen and everybody goes, well, you're, you're going to fail. It's like, no, I'm yeah. doing this because I'm not going to fail. It's 90% of businesses fail in the first year, not because that the market doesn't hold it or the whatever it's that they don't know business. Yeah. Like the concept of business and the reinvesting side is it's the hardest part, but there's time. Like, even if you can go out and only do 20 flyers a day, because a, that's all you have money for or the time for, or the 20 flyers is better than zero flyers. Correct. Right. Like, if you can't do that, but then you have the money to kind of have people and you have crews, now all of a sudden they can do flyers. Like if you're always doing something to move the ball forward, a little bit of something will move it slower, but it's still going to move it. Yeah. And at the end of the day, when you're able to save money and reinvest it back into marketing, you can now start to mail every door direct mail. You can now start to run Google AdWords, Facebook ads. Um, you know what I mean? You can you can start to call your customers, you start to do all these things. And then, and that's where the momentum starts to build is where you have these multiple funnels of, of sales coming from. And then before you know it, you've got a real business. Yeah. Uh, but the reason most people never run Google ads is because they can't afford it because they pay themselves too much, or they don't know how to manage their finances the right way, or they're not willing to sacrifice, et cetera. Um, yeah. But that's the only way. And that's the difference is the momentum. If you don't get momentum, again, back to my uh, passion for door knocking, if you don't get the momentum, all you're doing is starting over every single day. Like, could yep. you imagine starting a business, working it for a month, and then having to start a new business the next? Like, you'd learn lessons, but to do one at a time like that, the one and done thing, the concept just doesn't work. So every time, you know, somebody writes me a, a, a message about it, that's why this podcast we're talking about right now is so important to those people is because they go, well, I could get one customer. It's like, well, cool. Now you got a couple bucks. Yeah. But that didn't help you do anything unless you're, you know, somehow making enough that you're reinvesting everything and you're somehow making the ball roll in the experience and everything else. Yep. That's fine. But business is, business is a long-term thing in my head. I'm building a business. I'm not just paying myself, you know? So. Yeah. And, and the more consistent you are, like you're putting door hangers on the same houses every 30 days. It builds trust with those people, even if they haven't used you. I can't tell you, I mean, for probably seven years now, we've been sending to the same houses uh, every 30 days, how many referrals we get from people that aren't even our customer. Yeah. Because they see and our they stuff. feel like they know you almost. Uh, of course. Right. And they trust us because for seven years, <laughs> they've gotten a piece of marketing from us every single month. Yeah. Like yeah. we're not, we're not going anywhere. And exactly. so, so when their friend says, do you know somebody that, that cleans windows? They're like, well, I've never used them, but this company is always sending stuff to me. Yeah. You know, that is the momentum of a long term, And that's, what's a real business. Like yep. real businesses are around bucket bobs are the guys that show up and need the beer money, you know? Of course. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. I appreciate you kind of hanging out, spending some time again. Tell us about the podcast kind of yeah. tell us where we can find you or contact you or or give us all of that information. Yeah, man, go subscribe to my podcast. Uh, if you just search service industry podcast uh, with Matt Smith, you'll find me. I've got 170 plus free episodes on there. Um, and if you want to reach out, you can reach out to me at serviceindustrycoach.com. Perfect. Well, cool, man. I appreciate it. I hope this helped all you guys out there. If you're having any questions on it, if you're new in business or just need to get kind of a little bit different approach or mindset on it, I hope it really, really helped you. Uh, you know the deal though, shameless plug of the day, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. So let me know, I wanna put your stuff in, I wanna put your orders in, it costs you nothing extra and it's like a high five for me. So thank you in advance for that. And of course, get your subscription, awcmag.com, go and get the magazine. Um, but more importantly, uh, go out there, if you're new in business, listen to what people have to say. Hopefully you pick up a thing or two, but more importantly, go out there and be epic. <laughs>